All right, so at this point, we talked about the best tobacco fragrance, we talked about the best boozy fragrances, now it's time for leather. I love the note of leather because in perfumery, it conjures images of, you know, something that's sensual, sexy, intriguing, daring, mysterious. So we're gonna talk about the best leather fragrances in the world. So if you do enjoy leather fragrances, you guys are in for a treat. Get comfortable, this is a long video. It's gonna be 40 to 50 fragrances. I'm gonna zip through them, and of course, the last 10 are my absolutely favorite leather fragrances right now. So let's get into it. Welcome back to another video, Max here. If you do love to make a great first impression while smelling amazing, you know that I got you covered. In this video, we're gonna talk about the best leather fragrances in the world, whether it's designer or niche, discontinued, doesn't matter, they're gonna be featured in this video. Of course, if you do enjoy these series, of course, we did tobacco, we did boozy, it's gonna be listed in the description of this video. Today, we're tackling leathers. If you do enjoy these videos, if you do enjoy the content, guys, don't forget to share your support. Leave me a like, subscribe for more, and of course, I will continue to produce these videos for your enjoyment. So, let's hop into the leathers, shall we? I have some exciting news to share with you today. As we talk about these wild wow series of fragrance notes, we talked about tobacco, we talked about boozy fragrances. Today we're gonna to tackle the leather fragrances. I wanna share with you a mod. For those of you that don't know, a mod is a modification, a fragrance that has been modified a few times to create an actual final fragrance, which is then bottled and sold to you guys in stores or websites, what have you. This particular mod is the final creation or the final modification. This is the final and actual fragrance that's going to be bottled and it's actually a collaboration between Scent Explore. And if you don't know what Scent Explore is, I'm gonna have it linked below. Scent Explore is an international niche perfume convention that happens every year in New York City, uh, first weekend in December. So it's a collaboration between Scent Explore, Navitas Parfum, and a very renowned perfumer that shall remain um, nameless at this point because as you continue to watch the Max Forte channel, if you follow Scent Explore on Instagram, and if you have signed up for the newsletter of Navi de Parfum, not only will you find out more about this particular fragrance that's gonna drop very soon, but you're also gonna find out a lot more things about how special, exclusive, and limited this fragrance is going to be. So that's all I'm gonna say right now. Guys, stay tuned for more, more to come. Kicking off the list here is gonna be this, one of my favorite leather fragrances of all time. This was released, I believe, in the 90s, 92, 93. This is gonna be Safari from Polo. Now, the Polo Green that we all come to you know, love and we know, is basically a leather and tobacco. This is mostly a lavender and leather fragrance. So the lavender makes this very aromatic and the leather here makes it very um, vintagey, if you will, very old school, uh, very gentlemanly-like, very well put together, very made to measure kind of a feel. Safari from Paul Laura Florin is one of my favorites of all time when it comes to the note of leather. Another one that's a little bit animalistic leather, rough uh, with a very, strong note of uh, castorium. Uh, it's very animalistic. This is going to be Coros from Yves Saint Laurent. This is a phenomenal leather fragrance. If you do like it, you know, dirty. This is definitely one that I highly suggest you check out. What you get today does not have the silver edges, so it's gonna be a little bit more tamed, but it's still nice. Another one that's very similar to Polo uh, by Ralph Lauren minus the tobacco is going to be Yadagon from Cajon. And this one here is going to be a great rough leather with an old school uh, fougere kind of a vibe to it, much like a Zara Perome that I could have actually featured in this video, but I think that fragrance leans a little more in the uh, fougere or barbershop um, you know, style of fragrances. Next up, we have Fendi Womo. This is a great one, guys. If you do love a very Italian leather-like feel uh, that's a little bit animalistic, a little bit rough, a little bit dirty, Fendi Womo is great. It starts off really rough, but then it gets really creamy and develops with some uh, creamier woods like sandalwood. This is a great one. Tremendous amount of notes, but the leather here is very, very predominant. Uh, speaking of predominant leathers that I love, here is one, also a vintage formulation of this fragrance, one that I highly suggest you guys seek if you are a true leather fan. This is a must-have from the house of Hermès. This is Bellamy, and Bellamy is one of the best leather fragrances ever put together. You know, the name is very fitting, Bellamy, you know, my good friend. This is a fantastic leather fragrance. If you do like it, uh, spicy, leathery uh, fragrances that are very aromatic, Bellamy is definitely one that you should seek out. Uh, another one that's very hard to find these days, uh, used to be uh, Cheapy at one point, uh, released in 2007, I wanna say. This is Eau Sauvage uh, Fresh Air Cure, which is a fresher take on leather. So they took the Eau Sauvage, very aromatic citrus, uh, kind of a scent profile, with the herbal uh, green nuances and added this very fresh uh, kind of a leathery undertone. It is nice. Uh, it's not one of the best leathery fragrances out there, but it does add this really cool leathery facet to a phenomenal fragrance, which is uh, Eau Sauvage, of course. Uh, next up, we have one here that's, I don't think many people watching this video uh, are aware of this fragrance. This is from the house of Coach. 
Of course, Coach made a comeback a few years ago. They have Coach, a whole bunch of different Coach, Coach Platinum, Coach Green, Coach Blue. But before then, they actually had Coach Leatherwear 1, 2, and 3. And Coach Leatherwear number 1, to me, was the best designer leather fragrance you could buy. This is a phenomenal, very natural, very, um, you know, perfectly leathery kind of a fragrance. When I smell this, it smells just like a leather jacket or a leather, um, you know, upholstered chair or a beautiful leather seat. That's what I get with leatherware number one. Very aromatic, very citrus up top, but then it gets very leathery uh, and very natural smelling to the leather uh, accord. Love this one here. Very expensive to find these days. Another one that I think has been discontinued also from Ralph Lauren is going to be Supreme Leather. This is going to be more of a sweeter leather, almost gourmand. It has some, uh, some jasmine here, some creamy facets, uh, some sweet notes, but it's a very, very refined leather with a sweet undertone. Here's a hidden gem, and the time you're watching this video, this is actually available to purchase. If you wanna get it, I suggest run, don't walk, because it's one of my favorite leathers when it comes to the designer side of things. This is a very aromatic leather, sandalwood, and lavender combination. This is Dunhill, uh, many people know this as Dunhill Brown, or I just know it as Dunhill Man. It was the original Dunhill before Dunhill Icon. And this is an amazing scent, guys. I think it was believed, I think, I believe it was released early or mid 2000s. This is an incredible leather. To me, it smells like a suede leather, uh, very supple, very, very creamy, very easy to wear. Uh, very inviting. This is a great one. It's available right now for a phenomenal price. I picked up a couple bottles myself and I suggest you guys do it as well because this, when you find this in a gray market, it's gonna be very expensive, but at the discounters, Fragrance by that say has it in stock at the time I'm shooting this. And like I said, guys, don't walk, run. Dunhill uh, is a great fragrance. If you like subtle, smooth suede leather, you're gonna love that one. Next up, we have Jules. This has been reformulated. You can find a square bottle, a rectangular bottle rather which is available right now in the market. This is the old Christian Dior Jules. This is a vintage formulation from the 80s. This, again, is an amazing leather fragrance that's very similar to uh, Fendi Womo that I talked about. So it's gonna be that animalic, dirty leather with that uh, fougere kind of tendencies, you know, like a barbershop kind of a feel. Another one that's a very strong and powerful leather, um, more on the rougher side of things because it's gonna give you this petroleum gasoline kind of a vibe, is Fahrenheit uh, from Dior. And this, of course, a lot of people don't think this is a leather, but this is a very, very much leather kind of a fragrance, animalistic with that violet note that uh, conjures, you know, this imagery of gasoline. I love this stuff. To me, this is a phenomenal classic and to me, this is a love and hate. I know a lot of people can't stand the smell of this, but if you do love this fragrance, you love it to death. This is a vintage formulation. I have a backup of this one, and I have a lot of current bottles and current different flankers of this particular uh, fragrance. They had a couple different flankers, flankers over the years that were actually really good. Absolute was a great one, but the OG is definitely a great leather fragrance. Uh, another one that's been discontinued and very hard to find these days, fetching a pretty penny, is going to be Mugler's um, Angel Man Pure Leather from the Pure series that are completely gone at this point. You can't really find any of those fragrances even on their website, which is you know a damn shame because this particular line, uh, the pure collection of the, the A-Man was just absolutely fantastic. And the leather here had a very similar you know, smell to the original A-Man, adding this really cool uh, leather facet to the fragrance. The actual bottle itself resembles a texture of a leather. It is not, it's plastic, but it does resemble a leather kind of a jacket. Another one that was a cheapie and now became uh, heavily sought after this continue is going to be Midnight in Paris from Van Cleef and Arpels. This is going to be a powdery, um, kind of a bitter leather, if you will, uh, with some sweet, it's like bitter, sweet kind of a leather, very distinct uh, smell, Midnight in Paris. I do love this one. And there is a fragrance from Bulgari called Bulgari Black, which is like a hockey puck. Uh, I think a Nick Mernardo was the nose of that particular fragrance. And that particular one, Bulgari Black, you find it more often than you do Midnight in Paris. This used to be a cheapie, both Eau de Parfum and Eau de Toilette. You could have for like anywhere between 16 and 20 bucks, um, especially for the smaller bottle like this one. Now, not so much. Another one that will fetch an incredible price out there, and it is one of my favorite Yves Saint Laurent fragrances of all time, especially when it comes to the newer lines. This is going to be a release from 2013, if I'm not mistaken. This is Noble Leather, guys. This is an incredible leather with saffron, dried fruits, vanilla, patchouli. Just absolutely out of this world good, guys. Amazing leather here. If you find this one, grab it. I, I would pay up to 150. If somebody has a bottle out there they don't want, please hit me up. I will get it from you. I'll take it off your hands because this to me is one of the best designer brands, you know, upscale, high-end uh, leathers you could find. 
just absolutely breathtaking. More of a feminine release, especially this one. Uh, I do love it, I wear it myself. This is Cabo Shock, and this is going to be more of a floral leather with a nutty kind of a feel. I love this fragrance, it's a classic. This has been reformulated a few times. You can find this in many different bottles, many different concentrations, but I'm telling you, if you do enjoy a floral, nutty kind of a leather, Cabo Shock will definitely do you good. If you like animalistic, Zing from L'Artisan Parfumeur. I don't know what, what the fragrance is like today, but this is an older formulation. This is going to be a very, very funny kind of a combination. You have, of course, the leather, but you have some cotton candy, you have some gourmand facets, and very animalistic tendencies with this fragrance. This is no joke, very powerful. Uh, for this formulation, what's available today, I can't really talk about. Uh, another one that was very talked about in the fragrance community when it was first released, now it's kind of hard to find, is going to be Leather Blend uh, from Davidoff. This is their uh, upscale, more refined collection. I don't even know if this collection is still around, but this is more of an ambery leather. It's going to have some oriental uh, spices, dried fruits, uh, sandalwood, patchouli, some oud in here as well, but a great leather nevertheless. You could find this for incredible price at Notino back then and some of the discounter uh, websites. Now it's really hard to find and actually another one that's fetching a pretty penny. If you want to go old school, you can go with Aramis, the original Aramis. This is going to be again that beautiful dark animalistic leather along with some herbal nuances and of course the uh, barbershop uh, infusion in here as well. Really, really good one. I love this one. Another one that could go either way, feminine, masculine, unisex, gender free, is Banded. I go with the Banded Supreme, which has more of a, you know, stronger leather facet to it. I love this stuff. This is going to be a spicy, woody leather fragrance from the house of Robert Piguet. This is going to be Banded Supreme. Guys, check it out if you haven't. If you want another classic, this has been released for many, many years ago, I believe in the 30s, if I'm not mistaken. This is Knees 10. This is a classic. I get a lot of lavender here as well. This is going to be a clean leather, believe it or not. This formulation that I have here, I believe is from the uh, 2000s. So if you find something that's older, of course, it's gonna be more animalistic, darker, uh, more rough and tumble. This has been modernized, if you will, but still a great animalistic leather that's a little bit clean in the kind of the lavender. It gets even a little bit powdery, almost like a talcum powder kind of a feel. Barbershop leaning a little bit as well, but I do love these 10. If you haven't tried, guys, you're missing out. It's a great one. Uh, one that's deserving of mention here is going to be 1 million. Uh, this is absolutely gold. This is the best 1 million ever made. A lot of people say 1 million Mepaka Rabanne is a very childish, youthful, bubblegum kind of a fragrance. I get it. On my skin, it smells amazing. And if you go with absolutely gold, if you find this one, this one is the best because it had a very strong leather infusion. It was less sweet than the, the original 1 million, plus it had a little bit of an oud here. So it was this oriental leather, spicy kind of a fragrance. The best 1 million and the best leather 1 million. Believe it or not, 1 million is a leather fragrance. Next up we have Declaration, but this is going to be the Parfum. The original Declaration is more of a woody aromatic. This is a woody aromatic leather. They added the note of leather in this one, along with the spices, the woods, there's cedar, there's vetiver. This is again, another great leather that's a little bit in the cleaner side, a little cleaner, uh, easy to wear. Uh, but it has a note of cumin here, which adds that animalistic undertone that some people can get past. I do love it. A lot of the John Varvedo's fragrances were made amazing. Talking about the notes, they were a combination of incredible notes. This one here, of course, the leather, as you see the leather jacket-like that you have that uh, envelops the bottle itself. Resins, cacao, or some of the other notes. This is an incredible fragrance. If performance was not an issue with Varvedo's, this fragrance would always make my top 10 you know, this would make my top 10 leathers and a lot of the other Vervedos fragrances would make other top videos. On smell alone, they are incredible. I just wish they were a little bit better in performance. I believe this one has been discontinued, Dark Rebel and Dark Rebel Rider, which this is, but I'm not sure if you can find it out there, grab it. It's a great one. The smell is really, really good. If you like animalistic, you can't go wrong with Antheas from the House of Chanel. Another classic, I believe from 81 or 82. Absolutely incredible leather to the T, but it's gonna be more of a dark uh, kind of a leather with aldehylic notes as well. Um, this is another one that I think has been in skin. We're gonna go Prada back to back here. Uh, we have Prada Loam Intense. This is a great leather fragrance, which again, I believe has been discontinued with the leather, the patchouli, uh, the resins, the, the spices. Just an amazing scent with that clean uh, or um, very easy to wear, very inviting, uh, you know, a cord or structure that Prada provides with their fragrances. If you want to go a little bit more mature, I would go with Prada Amber Pour Homme Intense. 
This one again, I think has been discontinued. This comes up and goes out of stock very, very frequently. Uh, Fragrance by that's I believe the time I'm shooting this has in stock. I don't know, everything will be listed for you, but this is a phenomenal one. If you like resins, vetiver, spices, patchouli, uh, with a little bit of a vanilla uh, sweet undertone, but it's a very rough and, and, and spicy leather with the woods. This is a great one. It's very smoky as well. Prada Intense or Prada Amber Pro Home Intense. We're talking about Tom Ford Tuscan leather or Umber leather or Umber leather 16, whatever. And there's many companies out there, you know, Parfums and Marley Godolphin. I mean, there's so many to, to name in this video that this it was just a video talking about, you know, flankers and dupes of Tuscan leather, which was originated by Tom Ford. But this particular scent profile, is really really good there's no two ways about it but because it's been done to death it's one that i'm not going to keep it in my top 10 but it's one that's definitely worth mentioning as one of the best you know leather fragrances out there next up another designer here this is from the house of valentino this is valentino Wilmer intense this one becomes available and gets you know out of stock very very often some say this has been discontinued i'm not sure but this is your answer if you do love uh, Dior Homme Intense, but you don't like what's available today with all the reformulations. So this is gonna be a great choice for that. If you wanna go a step further, I would go with Dior Homme Parfum, which is essentially this kind of a DNA, but a little bit rougher in the account of the rough leather and the oud, the animalistic notes that it has, but it also has the iris, the patchouli, which is a little bit powder in the dry down, but the combination of the leather, the sandalwood, the patchouli, and the iris here with the cocoa vibe is absolutely incredible. This is a very nice leather. Um, Again, I don't wear these as much anymore. I wore a lot of these fragrances, you know, from 2014 up until three, four years ago. It's not the kind of leathers that I gravitate towards. I do like them a little bit darker and rougher at this point. Uh, speaking of dark and rough, this is Cure de Lucie from Chanel. This is Les Exclusives. This is an older Twilight concentration, an older con concentration, older formulation. Not what's available today. This one is definitely dark very aldehylic and very animalistic. It's got tobacco leaf along with the beautiful leather. This is, this is amazing, but this is not what you're gonna find in the market today. So unless you can find a vintage one, stay away from this one because they've been extremely watered down up to this point. If you like a floral kind of a leather that's very suede-like, very easy to wear, very inviting, purple suede from Goldfield & Banks, is a great one. This one here leans a little bit you know, familiar with Tom Ford's Tuscan leather, but it goes into a sweeter um, suede-like leather that is very, very nice, very appealing. But it's in the same family, same kind of a genre as, as Tuscan leather from Tom Ford as well. I've got an animalistic yet very pleasing to the nose uh, leather fragrance here that's underrated. This is a hidden gem, guys. This is from the house of Thymine London. This is Regent Leather. I love this one. This one has a very regal feel to it. It's a little bit borderline uh, sweet and animalic, if that makes any sense. So it's got vanilla, it's got animalistic notes. The leather here is very, very nice, very well blended. But again, it's animalistic and sweet at the same time. Very, very intriguing, very unique. Highly recommend you guys at least checking Regent Leather from Thamine London. This is African leather from Memo Paris. This is a very intriguing leather. It's a spicy, musky, cardamom and vetiver type of a leather. Quite, quite intriguing, quite unique. One of the most unique leathers here on this list. It's right in the middle. It's, you know, unisex, gender-free, anybody can rock it, but it has a little bit of a floral undertone to it. It could, for some people, lean a little bit more feminine. I do enjoy this one. I think it's a very confident leather to rock, and it's also very easy on the nose and great for compliments. This is from Memo Paris African Leather. Try their Irish leather also. You're gonna really enjoy that one as well. In fact, try the whole Memo Paris line. Their leathers are quite, quite amazing. If you like them spicy and fruity, I would highly recommend you guys check out Penhaligon's How Fatty's Leather. This is going to be a plum, juicy plum up top with some resin, some oud, gorgeous leather here. Easy on the nose, it smells like a million bucks. It's gonna give you that feeling of confidence. It's gonna get you smelling amazing. And I think um, not that hard to find. Although Penhaligon's a little bit hit and miss these days, they, they tend to discontinue a lot of things. But Halfati leather is quite good. Halfati cedar is really, really good as well. And the original Halfati, I think the whole Halfati line is one that you should definitely consider. And if you do love leathers, this is definitely one that you should check out. Uh, great price proposition. This would have easily made my top list. This is a boozy cognac and leather, it's spicy. Very long lasting, very powerful. I wore a lot of this fragrance. I've had so many bottles, the best money proposition when it comes to longevity, the smell itself, and the price. You cannot beat this one. This is Bentley for Men Intense. Again, my favorite uh, car blend when it comes to fragrance brands. This is an incredible spicy leather with oud, spices, patchouli. Absolutely insane, guys. 
if you think about a great entry leather, entry because of the pricing, you can find this for such great pricing, but not because of the smell, because the smell is very niche-like, it's very intriguing, very dark, very mysterious, very powerful, just an amazing blend, guys. Bentley for Men Intense remains the best affordable car brand release of all time, period. Uh, if you like a gourmandy kind of vanillin kind of a leather, I would go with Lomidel from the House of Guerlain. This is nice, it'll grow on you. The more you wear it, the more you're gonna like it, especially because it's gonna give you a lot of compliments. It's very warm, very easy to wear, almost like this suede leather-like with the vanilla and patchouli undertones, almost has this cocoa kind of a vibe. The same kind of, uh, you know, family as your Dior Homme, Dior Homme Intense. It's that kind of a situation where it's gonna smell great, it's gonna make you feel good, and people are gonna love the way you smell. This is a very safe leather, if you will. Um, if you want another safe leather that's more of a powdery, creamy, and floral, Creme de Cure, or you know, Cream of Leather from BDK Parfum is one that you should check out. Special ladies out there, this smells really, really good on a lady. I have to say, when my wife rocks this, I love it. Speaking of smelling great, uh, this is one of the best. This almost made my top 10, and this is from the house of Marc-Anton Barrois. This is Ganymede. This one made a lot of top lists, still makes a lot of top lists. This is one of those groundbreaking leather fragrances because, to me, this has, it doesn't smell like it, but if Baccarat Rouge 540 went Baccarat Rouge 540 leather, that's the kind of smell that I get here. It's got this really appealing, inviting, compliment infusing, uh, unique, exotic vibe to it. And it's a little bit sweet, it's very supple, it's very suede-like. It, it just wears like a perfect made-to-measure jacket. Ganymede from the house of Macanton Barrois, amazing, almost as you get close to my top 10, almost made the top 10. This one here almost made my top 10. It made a lot of top 10 lists for me in the past. Um, I think it has been discontinued, that's why I'm not making it in my top 10 today. This is from the house of Aqua di Parma, this is going to be leather. This to me smells, I think it's available, it has been reformulated, it, it, it doesn't look like this anymore. This is the Eau de Cologne Concentré, uh, which was the best version of this leather fragrance from, from, from uh, Aqua di Parma. And ladies and gentlemen, this is like a perfect exotic car upholstered leather seat. It smells just like that. If you open the door of, um, you know, Maserati, a Ferrari, a BMW, whatever the case may be, and they have, or Mercedes, but they have that exotic car upholstered leather, that's the kind of feel that I get with this fragrance. Just amazing. If you like it, sweet, gourmand, uh, stronger with you leather is a great choice. This one always makes tops winters, top fall lists for me because it, it's, it's really taking the original Stronger With You DNA, which is very sweet, you know, syrupy, sweet, ambery, and spicy, adding the beautiful note of leather, uh, you know, involving the actual composition. I do enjoy this one, but it doesn't make my top 10 because I think it's more youthful, more playful. Now we're getting pretty high up there. This is going to be from the House of Elysir, this is Extract Noir. This is a gorgeous, animalistic leather fragrance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is amazing. Eucalyptus, camphorous, piney note, along with ginger, leather, cinnamon, lavender. Almost gives me, almost gives me a barbershop feel, but it's really entirely an, just a phenomenal leather fragrance. This is rough, this is dark, this is mysterious. This is amazing. This is for the true leather connoisseur. But if you're listening to this video, watching this video, and you never try this fragrance, you owe it to yourself. This is one of the best leather fragrances in the market. And believe me, if this was easier to find, I would make this in my top 10 any day, twice on Sunday. Now we're gonna get into the top 10. I'm gonna start the top 10 list here with one fragrance that's named Pour Homme Oud, but it's not a nude fragrance, I promise you. This is going to be Salvatore Ferragamo Homme. Almost like Hermé Bellamy vibe to it, but it's modernized. So they took the Bellamy signature profile and made it incredible with the rum, the tobacco, and the gorgeous leather that it has. This should have been called Ferragamo Homme Leather or something else because it does not have a predominant oud at all. What I do get is that this fragrance is an amazing underrated jam that you should check it out if you want something that's really gonna make you stand out. At the next spot, we're gonna talk about Herba Leather from the house of Suspiro. Now, Suspiro has made an incredible comeback over the last couple of years, but Herba Leather has the Herba Pura, which needless to say, everybody knows and everybody loves, with the note of leather. Guys, this is an incredible, long-lasting, powerful scent. If you enjoyed Herba Pura, but you also love leather, combine both. Enough said, guys. Masterpiece right here. This is a must try. You have to. If you haven't gotten your nose on this one, you need to. This one here, I went through a lot of bottles. I believe this is my third bottle. This is Chambre Noir from Olfactive Studios. Yes, we do go through bottles, even though I have a lot. 
When I do love something, I particularly go for it time and time again. Chambre Noir is this pink pepper incense plum, you know, just gorgeous smoky leather. As the name implies, Chambre Noir, dark room. This one here, very similar to M7 from the house of Yves Saint Laurent, minus the oud. This does not, does not have the oud. Instead, it has vanilla, sandalwood, musks, incense, resins. It smells amazing, guys. If you love dark leathers and smoky leathers, earthy leathers, you owe it to yourself, guys. Try this fragrance. It comes in a different bottle, but it's still great. I have a current formulation. It's still one of my favorite leathers of all time. Next up, the nose behind this one is none other than Christian Carbonell or Chris Maris, which is to me one of the best noses of our time, especially in modern ears. This guy has made such hits with Serge Off, for example, which is a brand that we all come to love. And this particular one is a fragrance that he put together, Christian Carbonell or Chris Maris. This is Solage from the house of Cajal Parfums, which I love. This one here is absolutely a masterpiece. If you do love leathers, that are laced with patchouli, vetiver. This has almost all of my favorite notes put together, but it also has a green tinge to it in the account of the heavy oak moss that it has. So it has vanilla, oak moss, resins like benzoin adds this, you know, sweet facet to it, but it, it's a very rough and old school mature kind of a leather, much like boring, you know, elements from a lot of the older leathers that I talked about here in the beginning of the video, the vintage kind of a feel is what you're gonna get here. The vetiver here is amazing to dry down along with the patchouli, it has this almost cocoa vibe. If I wanna smell unique, exotic, different and powerful during the really cold months of the year, even if it's not too cold, like right now, you know, sometimes, you know, I can actually pull this off. Solage is a very intriguing, unique, enigmatic fragrance, guys. Try this out, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. If you love leathers with a vintage kind of a vibe, this is incredible and, and I think the combination of notes here make it for a very exquisite fragrance. Released in 2012, this particular fragrance that I'm about to share with you is one of my favorite leather fragrances of all time. The nose behind this fragrance is Julien Hasquinet, which we hear a lot about today, especially for Big Frag Head. You know that he's been doing some incredible creations, but this one here from 2012 is, in my opinion, one of his best creations, bar none. This is going to be Cure Velours from Naomi Good Sir. Both brand and fragrance are a hidden gem, a masterpiece that you owe it to yourself to try if you love fragrances that are leather based or leather infused. Cure Velours, minimalist bottle, the juice is worth a million bucks. Trust me, Just this is just wow. We're talking boozy accord with the leather and along with the tobacco, a hay note, immortelle, this is, to me, it smells like a leather liqueur. That simple. It's something that smells so good you want to drink it. Absolutely amazing. I wore a lot of this fragrance, believe it or not. You think this, this bottle is about halfway through. This is a beast. You put two sprays of this thing on, it's going to be on your skin for days. You're going to take a shower, it's still going to be there. I don't know if what's available today. It's still this pungent, this powerful. This is a 2012 bottle. But what I'm going to say to you is this is one of the most unique and intoxicating aromas of leathers that I've ever put my nose on. Guys, check Naomi Good Sir, uh, Cure Velours, you're going to be blown away. Before I give you guys my five favorite leathers right now to wear, I wanna also share with you that you can try all 50 plus fragrances that I talked to you about in this video at perfume.com. Whether you want niche, indie, or designers, they have you covered with thousands of fragrances to choose from. Use my code MAX12, get 12% off site-wide, mix and match on your cart to get a max pack going so that you can save even more and then use the code MAX12 on top to save further, guys. Get a decant, wear the fragrance you love. This is actually a leather fragrance that I'm trying right now and you're going to be you know, living with the fragrance, actually wearing on your body to make sure you love the fragrance before you commit to a full bottle. Guys, check out details below. All fragrances will be listed, even the hard ones to find. If I find it, of course, I'm gonna list it to make your life easier. Check out details, description of this video. As always, and enjoy Max12 at perfume.com to get 12% off site-wide. This is from Bottega Veneta. This is the Bottega Veneta Pour Homme Parfum, which is my favorite. You can go with the Extreme, you can go with the original Pour Homme, all of them will have this very enveloping leather facet to them, but the Parfum particularly has a piney, resinous, uh, you know, balsam fir resin, along with the pine uh, green kind of coniferous undertone, which I particularly love. It has this boozy effect, uh, almost like a tobacco as well. I'm, I'm not sure tobacco is listed as a note, but it has tonka beans, resins, a pimento note, which adds spiciness to the fragrance. This, to me right now, as of today, is the best designer leather money can buy. If you can find this one, this is another one that's very hard to find. Sometimes it gets in and out of stock very fast. As soon as it comes in, it sells out. But if you can get yourself a bottle, I would pay up to 125 to 150 uh, USD for a bottle of this. This is 100 mil. No, this is actually a 90 mil. 
but it does smell incredible. This is a very sexy, sensual leather, one that's great for compliments. Every time I rock this one, people, at least one or two people will ask me, what are you wearing? You smell so good. It's one of those really room filling and, and just inviting uh, kind of leathers. Love the stuff. This is Bottega Veneta's Pour Homme Parfum. Leather to the T, very refined, very regal smelling. At the fourth spot, this is actually technically a designer brand. This is Costum National. This is going to be Soul. This is my favorite from the line of Costum National. This is going to be leather, vanilla, oud, patchouli. It's very resonant, it's very spicy, and it's also smoky and earthy. This is a beast, guys. This is one that you don't need too many, too many sprays to become atomic, to become nuclear. I'm telling you, this one here, the, the name is very, very fitting. I think it also has this boozy facet to it up top, which could be rum or cognac, but the leather here is very, very powerful and it's gonna live throughout the whole life of this fragrance. If you love leather, so is one that you should definitely check out. So is going to be a very spicy and creamy, earthy uh, kind of a leather, very unique, very intriguing, opens up almost boozy. It's got pink pepper, cardamom, some spices, some resins, and then in the base you get vetiver, patchouli, vanilla, benzoin. It's very resinous, very smoky, very earthy, and also creamy as it gets warmer with your body chemistry. I think there's also sandalwood in here as well. This is a great one, guys. From the designer you know, side of things, another one that's a phenomenal leather. I left the last three here on purpose because these are the most intriguing, dark, mysterious leather fragrances in my collection. Uh, starting off with number three here, this is going to be Duro from the house of Nasomato. Duro is amazing. Duro to me smells like this dark chocolate, leather, spicy, animalistic, woody kind of a facet. You do have that Activer here in the base. There's a ton of woods, ton of animalistic notes. It's very spicy, very dark. Uh, the leather here is just amazing. You wear this, um, if, you, if you're not familiar with this fragrance, it's gonna be one of those, it's not gonna be for everyone, number one. But number two, if you do love it, you're going to absolutely fall in love with this. It's gonna be like one of those things, love it for a sniff. I think this could be a little bit weird for some people, but if you do love your dark, mysterious, and um, rough leathers, dark leathers, Duro is gonna be one that you absolutely will fall in love with. At the number two spot, this could perhaps be the most underrated Amouage fragrance in the market today. This is still available, it has not been discontinued, although a lot of uh, Amouage fragrances have been discontinued. Uh, Silver is one of those. I believe Diamant was in the verge of being discontinued, so there are a few Amouages that you know have been discontinued. Figment Man is one that has been discontinued, so Needless to say, this one's still available, and to me, like I said, it's the most underrated, especially if you do love leathers. This is Memoir Man, absolutely masterpiece with lavender, absinthe, spices, animalistic notes, smoky notes, incense, frankincense. The leather here is absolutely phenomenal, out of this world good. If you tried enough fragrances and you want something that's not more of the same, a lot of these fragrances here will turn your head. Trust me, and you're gonna love it. Memoir Man is definitely one of those. One of my favorite homages of all time, definitely top five for me. And if you love leather, you have to check this one out. This takes a special someone to wear. This is my number one spot and my favorite leather fragrance to date. This pays homage to a lot of the old greats. Derby from Guerlain, for example, Mitsuko also from Guerlain. It borrows elements from the Chipras and the old school leathers making a phenomenal, you know, modern world classic. I love Diaga Lab. I think it's one of those fragrances that's fit for a king, a czar, uh, an emperor. You know, meaning you need to be really confident to rock this because it's gonna have this old school vintage vibe to it. If you don't like the rough and tumble leathers that are, you know, spicy, woody, a little bit rough on the nose, a little bit animalistic, you're not gonna like this. But if you do love those fragrances that give you this, you know, feeling of confidence, of in control, and it's powerful and long lasting, Diagolev is a fantastic fragrance. No ways about it. My favorite leather currently, you know, it could change tomorrow. I just gave you my top. 50 plus leather fragrances. Leather is a note that I truly love, just like boozy fragrances or tobacco scents. A lot of these fragrances actually do have a leather slash boozy or tobacco to them, but these are most predominant leather fragrances in my collection that I love over the years and I was happy to share with you today. Also, please let me know in the comments what other leather fragrances I did not mention in this video because I mentioned a lot, but maybe your favorite was not mentioned. Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to read your comments and interact in the comment section of this video. Don't forget to check out Scent Explore Dot com. It's still time. We're about less than a month away from this event, about three weeks time. We're going to be live to the world in person and virtually. If you haven't signed up yet, you're missing out, guys. This is the largest international niche perfume convention that happens in New York City on December 1st and 2nd. I can't wait to see you. Giveaways, pre-launches, limited editions, exclusive releases. 
you name it. If it's niche, you guys, if you love fragrances, it's the place to be. This is our place. This is our fragrance Disney World where we come together to share our passion and make new memories. Guys, thank you so much for your support. As always, I will see you right back here with another video very soon. And stay tuned for this little thing here because I'm telling you, if you love wild fragrances, this is gonna turn heads. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.